uh, in Meru University of Science and Technology. The EPVOT is a research whose PI, that is the principal in investigator, is Professor Romanas Odiambo, who also happens to be the Vice Chancellor of Meru University of Science and Technology. The coordinator for the EPVOT horticulture is Professor Peter Masinde, who is a specialist in horticulture. Then we have the coordinator for the water, uh, EPVOT water, who is Professor Joshua Arimi, specializing in food science. Other members, uh, tech, uh, members of the technical team include Daniel Maitedia, who brings to this innovation hub um, a very useful technology for smart farming. We also have Beatrice Owiti, who is speaking, who is the communication officer for the entire project and ensures that the things that are happening with the project are disseminated to other members. The project is funded by NAFIC, an, a Netherlands organization that funds universities to do research together with other universities in the Netherlands. So this project has got partnerships within Kenya and within the Netherlands. The main partner in the, in the ne Netherlands is the Wageningen University of Agriculture, which together with Meru University came up with a proposal that has resulted in the research that you can see behind me. We are also working closely with TVET institutions. These TVET institutions are all over the country. So this is a project that permeates beyond Meru County. In Taraka Nithi County, we have Taraka Vocational uh, and Training Center, where we are working closely with them in the, both EPVOT water and EPVOT horticulture. In Meru County, apart from our own Marimba campus, which is a campus of Meru University of Science and Technology, we also have the Meru National Polytechnic, whom we are partnering with in this project. Then we also have other institutions that we are working with outside here, where we have in Kisumu County, we have a Hero Vocational Training Center. And then we have Migori County, where we also have Ciela Technical Training Institute. Those uh, institutions that I've mentioned are working together with us in both the EPVOT water and the EPVOT horticulture. Then we also have the Kenya Water Institute, KEWI, which we are working, partnering with in the water project because as you can tell from the name, KEWI specialize in water. So they bring to us the water expertise. Why TVET colleges? Now the project aims at ensuring that the horticulture graduate that comes out is able to do things hands-on. And the, the call was specifically asking for us to work with Tivet Colleges. And the, pro, the, uh, the project also specifically asked for us to work not just in Meru County, but work in Kenya. So we looked at horticulturally marginalized counties like Tharaka Nithi, like Migori and Kisumu. And we also, of course, had a horticulture-rich county like Meru. So we are working together with these institutions to ensure that the graduates we produce are able to use the farms like what we have uh, behind me, which, by the way, is replicated in all the six colleges where we are working. If you go to each one of them, you will find this. Now, this farm is not your normal uh, everyday farm. It actually is the Agriculture Innovation Center at Meru University. Now, this is the farm where we encourage our students to come up with innovations which they can share with others and we can incubate in this innovation center. So apart from being a farm, it also doubles up as the University Innovation Center. Now, this uh, innovation center also you can see we have uh, the horticulture crop, which is we have cabbage, we have uh, sukuma wiki in our local dialect, and we also have sweet potatoes. The sweet potatoes are um, also being researched on by our MSc students. We have two uh, Master of Science students in agriculture whose topics are related to the sweet potato and they are working on that. So you can see, apart from just this being a farm, it also enables us to teach. Why do we have 
a farm. Actually, there are two projects. One is e-pivot horticulture and the other one is e-pivot water. You see, horticulture goes together with water. Without water, plants cannot do well. So this particular two projects complement each other. So we are going to have water harvesting where we are going to harvest water in on all the roofs of the university and store those uh, that water in a dam. Now that water is purposely meant to ensure that throughout the year our horticulture crops in the Epivot farm do well. You could also see the greenhouse where we are doing a very different kind of farming. In the greenhouse we are using non-soil media to grow mainly tomatoes and we want to teach our students that horticulture pay, horticulture work, and that as a horticulture graduate, you need to work hands-on, and when you do, you'll probably be able to see very good benefits. So we are starting from ourselves in showcasing how this is going to be able to work. We are having consultants in the project. This, uh, the main consultant for this project is, is known as Professor John Wesonga, who is as a horticulture specialist from Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture in Nairobi. So it is a project that brings together a lot of partners. It is a, a project that seeks to work hands-on and it's a project that wants to see nothing but success. And as you can see from uh, our farm here, we are actually proving to uh, everybody and to our students that this can be done and we are going to continue working to ensure that this works. Thank you. Welcome to Mary University of Science and Technology, our first university of excellence. Mary University of Science and Technology, and here we are on our experimental field in Mokodima uh, land where we are carrying out our trials. The experiment is about uh, sensor-based irrigation and uh, is combined with biochar as a soil amendment and we have come here on the field to validate those two technologies that's why we are on this farm Hey guys, I'm Hakima Rashid, a third year student from Mary University of Science and Technology. Pursuing Bachelor of Science in Botany and Zoology, I take this opportunity to welcome you to Mary University of Science and Technology. Mary University is a family full of diversity. We are accepting of each and everyone from all walks of life. Mary University creates linkages that help us as students get industry exposure. Mary University has a variety of sporting activities. I belong to the MAST softball team. As a member of the softball team, I gained a lot of exposure. We get to visit other universities and interact with a lot of people from diverse backgrounds. If you're looking for a university that offers quality education and talent development, Mary University of Science and Technology is here for you. Our September 2021 intake is ongoing. For more information, visit our website www.mast.ac.ke. Follow us on our social media pages at Mary University. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Most welcome to this event this afternoon. We are here uh, to attend 
and to orient our first years into the University of Science and Technology. We are waiting for our colleagues who are joining, so we shall start this event in the next two minutes. Most welcome and keep logged in. Thank you. Colleagues who are trying to log in, we can see a few of them struggling. So kindly be patient so that we can all start together. Students, the class of 2021, for joining Mary University of Science and Technology. We are very happy to receive you today to be part of this wonderful family. Thank you, Dom. So. Sorry for that interruption. Uh, I was just saying that I really want to welcome you to Mary University of Science and Technology. People are wonderful, you smart, you work very hard to earn yourselves the placement at this prestigious university. We wish you a good stay uh, as you study your course. We wish you good experience of university education and university life. It is very different from what we had in high school because we are graduating from one level to another and I know you are best fit to fit in the university learning environment. Once again, I congratulate you for placing yourself, getting placement in this wonderful university. Now, Mary University has eight schools, of which all of you have been, uh, have been admitted in a particular program. We shall be giving you guidance and helping you to settle down so that you can attain what you came for. The day of entry into Mary University is great, but the day of exit into Mary, out of Mary University with wonderful certificate, with the best classification that you can ever attain for yourself, will be a day of great joy. We urge you to settle down, to work very hard, to work very smart, to behave like adults now, to behave like students uh, who really understand why they are in the university setup. It will be different because in the university, there will be no bells, no one to wake you up in the morning, no teacher on duty to guide you on the lessons, no one, really it is you and the values that you are taught by your teachers and the values that you are taught by your parents, the values that you are taught by your aunties, uncles and grandparents. Now, we ask you to really settle down. Through the week, 
you've had various uh, interactions in the department, and now we can say we have you well registered in a particular school. We now have your documents verified by different departments. The finance team verified that you have paid school fees. Now we call you an eligible student. One who now is a bona fide member of Meru University of Science and Technology. Feel most welcome and feel at home. We shall have a program running for about one hour and a half. And basically we shall be telling you what happens in the university. Trying as much as we can to make you feel comfortable, to make you feel supported, to make you understand your way around so that when you're on your own, you don't struggle to ask where is the library, where is the admission office, or what happens in sports. We want to make you so comfortable such that your only duty will be to study and do all that is required of a university student. With those uh, few remarks, I will call upon the AR admissions, Madam Lucy Itonga, to take us through the admission matters and basically your stay and your requirements. What do you require to do while you are in the university to ensure progression from first year, first semester to fourth year, second semester? Madam Lucy Itonga, most welcome to address the first year students. Thank you. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. I am Lucy Itonga, officer in charge of admissions. Uh, let me take this opportunity to get to my colleagues in welcoming you to the university family. A one plus university of science, a one plus university of excellence in science and technology. And in this, the admissions office is a team who will be serving you in different capacities. And we have the clinic, Agnes Kamba, who will be handling the system setup, the ERP registration issue, and also a uh, student semester registration issue. Uh, we also have Christine Mahabre, and she will be handling uh, student inquiries. one is admission of students. Here we have two categories of students. The government this process. So whatever you are going to do up to this point in time, is the admission tree, retrieving of student data when required, and we do storage of uh, student information in management uh, records, uh, whereby if a student has an issue, like um, uh, maybe he or she wants to defer, you are required to request for that deferment uh, through the same office. This one you can do manually if you are on board but you can also do online through sending an email to the university email account. In this one, any of the issues addressed through this channel will always be addressed and we get a feedback of it. Uh, we have a unique identifier, that is your registration number. 
which by this uh, time you already know your registration numbers, whereby uh, the very first set of the number indicates the program in which you are located or rather allocated. And then number two is your unique identifier that is specific to an individual. And the last one is the year when you are admitted. Uh, this one becomes, the, the registration number is your trademark when you are at this university. Uh, there are other issues that we handle at the office on uh, fee structures. On fee structures, we usually share or circulate our fee structure through the university website, whereby students are supposed to log in to the student website and be able to access your fee structures. And these fee structures are the ones we use to register you uh, on a semester by semester basis. And one thing I will request is that uh, when you are here, make sure always you are registered for the semester so that you don't have issues to do with your uh, registration or uh, awarding of marks when you come to the end of the semester. So always make sure, even as a continuing student come in the semester, you are registered for the semester. Uh, in which you are supposed to be, that is going forward. And in case you have any issues to do with the billing that is in your account or in your portal, uh, always please, uh, you can ask if you have, if at all you have any query on that through the admissions office. And if you request, whenever you want to inquire on such a matter, you do it through a portal communication and rest to the registrar so that it's addressed fully to the satisfaction of the particular individual. The other thing that we do uh, is that uh, uh, we do the, 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 the deferment, uh, whereby when you report for deferment, it will go through a process and you could also get a feedback from the state. So any query, any inquiry to that office will always be addressed through the admissions office which goes all the way through a process, and then you get a feedback as an individual. Uh, basically, in admissions, uh, that is all we have for now. Uh, but maybe another thing I wish to note about fee payment, even going forward, just as we requested when you are entering this university, make sure you pay your fee through the university fee payment account that are providing them, uh, uh, most specifically or most preferably the cooperative bank account and uh, the equity bank account so that we can update your portal uh, as fast as possible. Thank you, Dr. Lillian. Thank you, Madam Lucy, for briefing us on all matters relating to the admission of students. One point to add, is that now that you are registered and bona fide students in a program, <coughs> class attendance is your responsibility. It is you who will ensure that you, all your lectures are attended. At the end of the semester, we shall evaluate 75% attendance. So start counting from Monday, the classes will attend. You can miss some due to reasons here and there, but over and above, 75% is the first mark attendance of which allows you to sit examinations. It is your responsibility to attend to all tutorials, carry out uh, all assignments, attend seminars, attend practicals, and all instructions are given by the lecturers. You will receive uh, the, the teaching timetable, uh, which has uh, values, where the lectures will be held and time of the day when your class attendance will be um, held. Please know your program. For example, BSc Economics. Know your department. Know your school. Because as for, we shall always refer to you as student by your admission number, student by your program, and student by your school in a certain department. That department will remain your department, your department and the school until you graduate. Now, in each program, you are required to study for one academic year, which is made up of two semesters. Semester one, 
which now you've been uh, admitted into, which you'll study for 13 weeks, of which two weeks, plus two weeks of examinations. Then you will have a short break of a week or so and get into a second semester. Second semester is a semester which uh, takes you through an academic year. After passing your examinations, you will move or progress to the next academic year. So right now you are in year one, semester one. Student call it 1.1. Your course will have uh, what we call course units. So each semester you will study uh, between seven and, and nine, nine, depending on your school and your program of study. But on average, it will be about eight. You're not too overworked, you're not too free. So ensure all the requirements, all the necessary issues that require your lectures are well attended to. Please take your study seriously, seriously because those will form marks which, which will be accounted towards the end of your program. We shall get to the issues of examinations in a short while. In the meantime, we want to hear uh, the role of ICT in your study. You already met them. I'm sure they helped you understand your student portal and all that pertains to it. I will now call upon the ICT manager, Joyce Mwenje, to take you through uh, the functions of ICT and the place it plays in your academic life. Thank you. Welcome, Madam Joyce. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tari. Uh, uh, I wish to welcome you again, first years. Uh, my name is Joyce Mogore Mwenja, as you have been told. I am in charge of ICT uh, department. At this moment, uh, I'll take you through the various functions within ICT and how we expect you to, to work with us in matters of uh, technology. First and foremost, I would wish to confirm that ICT department in Meru University of Science and Technology is a department that is an enabler, uh, meaning that our main, our core objective as a department is to help the university in realizing its set objectives th through technology. Just as you have it now, you already know that you are in Meru University of Science and Technology. That clearly tells you that uh, most of the activities and operations within the university are currently automated. And having joined Mary University, as you progress with your academic, you realize that uh, most of the operations, what you are expected to go through or what you'll be doing on daily basis, just like what has been mentioned, is that you'll have to do everything online. And to make sure that we ease the kind of uh, work that you're supposed to be uh, partaking from your end, we have, come out, we have come out with the student portal. The student portal uh, basically has everything that you are required to be doing within the university. Uh, starting from units registration, everything that you require to do within this university, apart from going to class, whereby probably you physically you may be required to be in a, in a, in a room somewhere, everything else you are supposed to do it online. Uh, at this juncture, I'll just want to let you know, I know currently you are logged in and you are able to go through or to actually participate in what we are doing today. And how you've managed to log in, we do not, you did not, the system did not request that you use any credentials for you to be able to access our internet. However, effective Monday, we expect that we are going to issue you with credentials to access our internet connectivity within the university. But for today, because we are still working on your email addresses, we are also working on your passwords, you realize that we have let you log in without any credentials. But effective Monday, after we are done with all the orientations, we will expect you to go to log into your portals, 
uh, you'll find your passwords there and that is what you'll be using on daily basis to access internet as long as you are within the university. Before I talk much about the student portal, uh, by going to the university website, if you go to the university website, uh, at the far end uh, of, the, of the website, that is at the light hard corner, you will see the functions for the ICT. If you go to ICT docket, you'll be able to see all what we are able to provide to you. You'll find some guides, uh, you'll find some guides there on some of the things that we offer at the ICT. You'll be able to go through and actually be able to get in touch with the relevant personnel within ICT in case you need any assistance. Now, going back to the student portal, because that is what is very key today for us here, to be able to briefly understand the expectation of this portal as a student. The moment you log into your student portal, which of course we expect that you'll be using your admission number and are given credentials. Uh, by default, we request that you use your uh, national ID number. If you do not have an ID, you use your birth certificate number, which you actually availed during admission. But upon logging into that portal, you can be able to change your password. You can be able to change your password. So I'll just briefly brush through that portal, if you can be able to have access to that. When you log in, the first thing that you get is the front page, or what we call the dashboard. What we call the dashboard of your student portal. And at your left hand side, you'll see quite a number of uh, uh, activities there. We have actually grouped them according to the needs. So at the far end, if you scroll down, uh, probably this will be done well practically, but I want to believe that uh, at this stage, you can be able to maneuver a website, you can be able to maneuver a portal. Uh, so if you scroll down to the end, you are going to see help. At the help, that is where we have maintained all the manuals. That is where we upload all the manuals uh, in terms of guides. The user guides, for instance, you'll be able to see a unit registration guide that will guide you on how to register unit. If you are stuck, kindly make sure that you go to that guide, open it, it will guide you on how to register for units. Uh, at the same time, you can, you'll also be able to see a change of course guide. Change of course guide, I know immediately after this, Probably in a few days will be required to, for those who want to change uh, courses, they will actually be uh, requested to do so. So again, you'll be able to find a guide there uh, to guide you on how to make, uh, to request for change of course. And many other, and uh, uh, every time there is a need, we make sure that we have uh, a guide that can be able to guide you. Because remember, again, it may not be able, we may not be able to, uh, to assist each one of you individually. So we ensure that, uh, we make sure that we prepare these guides and have them there for your view. And we'll also be circulating them through your emails. Once we activate the email addresses, again, we expect that you should be able uh, to have the guides through your email addresses. And at this point, it is my sincere uh, emphasis that uh, I wish and uh, to request that kindly that by the time you log in and you have your email address, ensure that you start making use of that email address because that is where most of the communications within the university will be channeled through. Uh, talking about the dashboard, uh, if I were to go back there, uh, we are also talking about the change of password for your portal. It is very important that you make use of a password that you can remember because some of the challenges that we go through uh, every now and then is whereby a student cannot remember their passwords. So immediately you log in the first time, make sure that you change your password to suit what you can remember uh, always, so that you can be able to frequently access your, your student portal and actually get all the information that is relevant from there. I want to go back again to, to, to that portal, the student portal. Uh, someone have just talked about, you can be able to see your fee statement from there. So, you don't have to go to the finance office to ask how much do I owe the university. So kindly just log into your student portal. You'll be able to see your fee statement from there. If you have any queries to make, then that is the only time that you need to go to finance office for clarification. You are also able to view your receipts from there. Uh, you are also able to see something else we are calling a lecturer's evaluation. You can be able to see your industrial attachment there. 
So every other day, uh, depending on the needs uh, from each and every department, we will make sure that everything that you have that is required of you is actually populated through the student portal. That is for ease of accessibility to any information that may be required to be channeled uh, through to the student. Uh, you have so far realized that uh, we are also able to send you short messages through your phones. Probably if there is an urgency, we need to make communication uh, to the students and probably there is no ample time to do so. Uh, again, you realize that uh, we are able to send you short messages advising you on your expectation from relevant departments. So again, you'll be able to see that. But uh, uh, going back to the student, uh, to the unit's registration, because that is what is very key. And uh, most of the time we normally get the questions that we are getting from students is, uh, probably they are not able to see the units that they are supposed to be registering. Uh, kindly always refer to the user guide. I want to emphasize on that because it could be a bit uh, of a challenge for you uh, being the first time probably to be able to maneuver through the portal. But we have tried our level best to ensure that this student portal is very user friendly. It is very user friendly. So as long as you are connected and you are able to read, then uh, by default you, you will be able to register uh, your units. So you realize again, when you go to your student portal, now I'm on my left, my right hand side of the portal, I'm done with the dashboard whereby we have clearly uh, stipulated all the lines or the areas that we need. Uh, you realize we have, uh, when, you, when you are at the front page of your student portal, you'll see the units, uh, registered units, reg uh, registered units. So the moment you register your units, because that is a very common question that we get. If you do not update, then you will not see the units there. So our expectations is that when you pick the units that you want to, to register for that uh, semester, you'll have to submit them for you to see them under registered units. That is key because students pick them, but they don't submit. So if you don't submit, then again, it becomes a challenge on your head because you'll always find yourself having not registered the units. Again, it is of important to note that you can register units and you can also deregister. Uh, that is also a very common question where students go to the portal, they register for units, but by a mistake, they registered a unit that was not supposed to be registered, so they want to get it out of their registered units. Again, the system will allow you to deregister the unit yourself, so you'll be able to go back to your portal, pick on the unit that you want to deregister, and then you'll be able to deregister for yourself. Uh, another key important information uh, to put through here is about update of uh, your bio data, all information that is on your portal. Uh, I would wish that immediately you log into your portal, kindly confirm the information, the basic information that is on your portal, that is what we have in the database. That is what we have in the system, that is what is in the, in the admissions office, and that is what is going to be used all through until uh, you leave Meru University. So kindly confirm that that information is correct, so that if it is not correct, it can be adjusted as early as now. So kindly confirm that, because at a certain point, probably will be required to open for students to update that. Uh, we ensure that most of the time with the, with the uh, with the commitment from the Office of the Registrar, we can open the portal for you to update that data, and then we close it. So kindly confirm that is very key, and it is very important, so that you don't get to forth here with wrong information, and then it becomes very hard for, for that to be updated. Uh, and I think the last thing that I would wish to talk about here, uh, it's about uh, communication to ICT, and especially in matters there, it comes a problem when we, uh, when students are not in a position to know exactly where they are supposed to ask or to query, something matters to do with the portal, something matters to do with admissions. If you go to your portal and you get stuck, that is an ICT matter, kindly, uh, you can drop uh, uh, an email to ICT. So I started by saying if you go to the website and you go to the to the ICT uh, uh, website, you'll be able to, to communicate to us, you can write to us and actually uh, uh, share with us your, your, your query, then you'll be able to answer back. 
if it's something that you need to visit us, probably you are not able to connect your Wi-Fi, then again, you are welcome to come to ICT and make the necessary follow-up with the ICT team. So I think uh, I am done with ICT. Dr. Ali, thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Joyce, for that wonderful insight into the role of ICT in the student life. Now, remember with the corona pandemic, we cannot be left behind in ICT. Really, we have to embrace the new standards, the new styles of working, because we may not always get into class. We may have to be supported differently so that we can attend class wherever we shall be. I will now call upon the director, Odell, to tell us her role in helping us with our studies. She will tell you what Odell is and the duties she does to support you uh, succeed in your studies. Thank you. Welcome, Madam Gasheri. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Mary Asunta Gasheri. I am the director for Open Distance and Electronic Learning. So once again, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the university. That is Mary University of Science and Technology. We are here to help you to achieve your dream, to achieve your goals. So the directorate of Odell is here to ensure that you have continuous learning, regardless of the circumstances. You're very sure that, uh, and you've seen that, the pandemic has affected the way we carry out studies, the way things are carried out all over. And the directorate is here to support continuous learning under any circumstances. And how do we do that at Mary University? We have a learning management system that is accessed through the website. There's a link there, which you can be able to use to reach to the learning management system. Now, this learning management system, we're going to train you on how to use it. And once you've registered, you'll be able to get the credentials that you'll be able to use to access the learning management as well. So what do you require for you to be able to use the learning management system? Number one, you need to register as a student. Number two, you need to register for the units. So once you've registered for the units that you're taking in a particular semester, because these two systems are integrated, you will find them on the learning management system for you to be able to learn from there. And what are the tools that you require for you to be able to learn online? Number one, and most preferably, we advise you to have a laptop or a computer so that you can be able to uh, learn successfully. You can also use a smartphone or a, a laptop. We have uh, uh, done our learning management system in a way that you can also be able to use a smartphone to, to learn. We also use uh, Zoom and Knet whereby we want to emulate a face-to-face -face classroom. So uh, when a lecturer has a face-to-face -face, uh, sort of classroom, they'll be able to send you a link or upload it on the learning management system that you will be able to uh, see from there and access it to be able to attend class. So um, the directorate of Odell is also going to help you do the common units most of the common units, the UCUs that you see that you have as a part of your course are offered through the Directorate of Odell. So this is one of the reasons why you should be very keen in learning how you uh, use the learning management system for your learning. Uh, you will find that some lecturers will uh, would like to do a blended sort of learning whereby they could prefer to meet you maybe sometimes face-to-face, uh, -face, and other time they want to teach you online. This is what we call blended learning. So all this is done by the directorate of Odell. Materials are uploaded on the learning management system, and then you either meet face-to-face, -face, or you can be able to meet through Zoom by a link that the lecturer is going to send to you, or 
through the big blue button, which is Knet. And all this, we shall be able to train you on how to use and how you'll be able to learn successfully. We also are offer cuts and uh, assignments using the learning management system. So it is very uh, key that you attend the trainings that we are going to do for you next week so that you are able to know how to navigate through the learning management system and how to use the, the conferencing facilities that we have, that is the Zoom and the big blue button. So thank you very much. Once again, welcome to Mary University. We are happy to have you here and we are happy to work with you so that you are able to achieve your goals. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mary Gasheri. Now, Mary has not told you that she will record your attendance as if you are attending a physical class. So I ensure that the link that is sent to help you uh, log in and sign in is on your registered password so that she can record your attendance. It is through her that you shall track what I call 75% class attendance. So if you log in using your friend's phone or your friend's computer, remember you have not attended class. You've got to use yours so that um, Madam Mary can help us track your class attendance. Remember we said we are here to support you. All departments will work very hard to make sure that you succeed in the core business of your study. So you've uh, now gotten uh, from the ICT, you've gotten from Odell, all who are very close support to you to enable you to uh, achieve your goal. One other department that I would want to introduce at this point that is very key to your study is the Department of Library. With me is Madam Ruth Gibendi, the senior librarian, who will uh, tell us the role of the library in our studies. Welcome, Madam Ruth. So good afternoon. Um, first of all, I'd like to pass my word of congratulations to you for making it to this great university. Uh, my name is Ruth Gibendi, senior librarian. And uh, as you will find out, the library is a very, very critical part of your learning process. In fact, our mission is to empower you through information. So in your study, you will discover that uh, in the course of your tasks, in the course of your lecturers, in the course of your um, undertakings here, the library will be a very core component and ingredient to your success. So for this reason, I, I think some of you may have already visited the library. Uh, you've seen a very big structure there called Ru the Ruben Marambe Library. That library is named after uh, the former chairman of council who was very, very instrumental in, in setting this uh, great institution to reality. So um, the mission, our mission, as I've told you, is to empower you through information. The tasks that are undertaken to achieve this are uh, a lot, and uh, it is not possible for us to take you through it today. So we will have a whole series of training by school next week. So next week we will have dedicated trainings to give you hands-on uh, instructions on how you access the library resources and uh, get them to your use. But for now, it's important that I give you an overview. So first of all, the library is made up of three branches. There's the main library here, which is the Ruben Marambe Library. It has a capacity of 500, much less because of COVID. And then uh, we have the town campus library. And uh, for students in... Um, our center in Marimba, we have uh, uh, the Marimba Learning Center Library. So as a student, you are free to visit any of this library and you'll be given the services that are offered. So feel free at any one time to visit any of the libraries that, are, that um, belong to our institution. We offer a number of services. Our library is automated. And the starting point for the many of our library services is our library website. And our library website is library.must.ac.ke, library.must.ac.ke. So from the library website, you're able to get a number of services that are, that are offered by the library. 
So first of all is the registration. The registration is automatic. By just being a, a, a registered student of the university, automatically you become a member of the library. Your registration details are your library number. So anytime you visit the library and you need services, that number, the registration number, will be key for you to access uh, the services that we have to offer. So the physical services that we offer include photocopying and printing and binding. A number of you may have visited it in, during the registration uh, process. So you've realized that we offer those services uh, at a small cost. Um, we also offer uh, physical books. Our collection is made up of approximately 25,000 print books. So you, at any one time, you are able to visit the library and read any book that is on the open shelves. Any book that you find there is actually for, for your use. Books are for use. So those resources there are actually for your use. Then we offer audiovisual resources. So we grant you access to DVDs and CDs, which you can be able to access and use them. You can visit the library and read your own resources. Uh, the library is beautiful and comfortable for those of you who've been there. And uh, we are here to the COVID protocols. So uh, you can come to the library and read the books and leave them there after using it. In addition to that, we offer e-resources. We have access to over 100,000 e-books in all subject areas. So um, as uh, Director Odell has said, Part of our learning includes blended learning, in which case you will find the e-books to be extremely useful for your course of study. So we'll be showing you how to access and use these e-books next week uh, so that you can have the hands-on um, uh, skills in the use of these resources. We offer access to e-journals. These this provide the latest research works. A university is a research institution. So once the research has been done and is published, it is usually presented in what is known as a journal. So we offer a lot of journals in databases. We grant access to over 35 databases. That provides us to millions and millions of journal articles. So that will also be very useful to you, especially as you advance in your studies. We offer you also past papers. So for your revision, uh, we grant you access to past information papers. Um, we are accessible to you. Um, you can do us an email. Our email address is library at mast.ac.ke. We also have live WhatsApp. If you visit our website, if you visit the library website, which is library.mast.ac.ke, then you'll be able to see that we grant access to WhatsApp help. So you can simply log in and ask us any question that is related to, to the library, and we will be able to assist you. So um, w I will be meeting you tomorrow for the physical orientation of the library based on the different faculties. So please have a look at the orientation schedule and see when you are, uh, your school is, is scheduled for the library orientation. So tomorrow, physically, we will take you through this as well as give, us, uh, give you a number of instructions on the use. And then next week, we will train you we will train you on how to actually go ahead and use these resources. So once again, I wish to welcome you to Mary University and the library at large and uh, use these resources. And as I've told you, we are here to empower you. So feel welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Ruth Gibendi, uh, for telling us exactly why the library is important for us in the university. Now, we have heard from admissions. We now are bona fide, uh, bona fide student of Mary University. We have heard from ICT. We have heard from Odell. We have heard from the library. At this point, I want to bring you to the issue of examinations so that you understand that once you settle down, your core business will be to study and get uh, reasonable results. I told you my name is uh, Dr. Lillian Moria, and I head the Department of Examinations. Now, listen to me very carefully. I'm now not moderating. I'm giving you instructions on how to navigate through and pass your examinations. Number one, 
the university will endeavor to make you comfortable in every way. When you go to the catering uh, office to eat your food, it is all to support your study. When you visit the ICT, it is all to, to support your study. When you go to the library, when you go to the admissions office, all these people are only helping you do one thing, get to your core business. Now, at the examinations office, allow me to be the examiner now and tell you that once you're registered, you will study for 13 weeks, you will attend your class, you will sit for your cuts, you will sit for your practicals, you will go through your seminars, and you will go, you'll do everything as instructed by your lecturer. Kindly note, the lecturer is not your friend. Instead, they are recording your marks and keeping them ready as what we call continuous assessment tests. The continuous assessment tests will be part of what will allow you to sit for the end of semester examinations. So you will be required to pay your fees, sit for your cuts as a prerequisite to sitting for your examinations. Now, the university examinations are of different types. Allow me to take you through one by one. So we have what we call ordinary examinations. Ordinary examinations are made up of continuous assessment tests, industrial attachment, practicum, teaching practice, all those things put together to add up to what we call your course assessment test plus end of semester examination. End of semester examination, which is done on week, that, on week 14 and week 15 of every semester. It is after sitting your first semester examinations and passing that you progress to second semester of study. You will get the results saying pass or fail. So if you fail, the registrar is very kind to allow you to progress to semester two as you wait to sit for that end of uh, that failed unit. If you pass, which I expect all of you to do, you will progress comfortably to your second semester of study, which is also the end of your one year of study. How do we evaluate? In high school, you evaluated for a four-year course. In the university, we evaluate you every semester and every year. So it becomes much easier to pass and very difficult to fail, but again, very easy to fail. Now, the continuous assessment tests will be added up and summed up into 30%. So anything you'll do that your lecturer tests you on will be calculated at 30%. The examination, which will be either two hours, one and a half hours, or three hours, depending on the program you'll take, will constitute the other 70%. Now, for bachelors, the pass mark is simply 40% a very, very, very friendly mark. All of you are here with 85% because it's called A's in your subject. So 40% is a walkover, right? Or 60% for PhD students and 50% uh, for master's students. You will also have the regulated programs that usually will uh, give a pass mark let's say, of 50%. For example, those in nursing, those in recruited programs uh, uh, in Tibet, those in recruited programs will have a pass mark set for them by the regulator to allow for registration and easy transition into the job market. Now, the, the other test we have, I've mentioned ordinary examination. The other test type of exam we have is the continuous assessment test, which is the CAT. And I said the CAT can be theory uh, or a practical, or a presentation, a quiz, a report, a practical, an assignment, whatever your lecturer will choose to give 
but two of them are must in every course. Note, two, at least two in every course. So that if you sit for one assignment and the second assignment is not done, we shall consider you to have failed in your cut. Therefore, you cannot sit for your semester examinations. What I'm telling you, my dear students, is ensure your continuous assessment tests are well done and you've gotten your marks and your evidence paper before the examinations are done. The schedule for the cuts will be communicated usually uh, by the registrar's office in a, in a schedule, but in the semester dates, you'll find where the cuts fall in and the notice for the examinations will be there. Now, the other uh, type of examination is what we call supplementary examination. If you fail the ordinary examination, which in other words is called end of semester examinations, we shall allow you to sit for what we call supplementary examination. Supplementary examination is usually marked out of 40 or 50%, depending on your program. So ensure you don't get this route. It can be very dangerous. If you fail the supplementary examination, we shall allow you to sit a second attempt of the examination, which in the real sense is a third attempt. The first attempt being ordinary examination, second attempt being supplementary examination, third attempt being second supplementary examination, which will also be accompanied by an academic warning. Now, if you fail the third attempt, we are still very kind, very nice to our students. We shall allow you one other last chance. We call it the fourth and final attempt. If you fail, it's not negotiable. You will go home under category of discontinuation. It is real, 40% is a very easy mark. At the same time, a very tough mark to attain. Keep to your core business in the university. The other type of exam is special examination. For some reason, if you're not able to sit for ordinary examination, basically for two reasons. If by bad luck, God calls your parents home and they, and they have passed on, a parent, we can agree, is really a big loss. So we shall allow you to defer, uh, to, to, we shall allow you uh, to schedule for, uh, I mean, approval to sit special examination. It is at least uh, extended, a guardian. We know all of us uh, may not have, uh, may have uh, really grown up with a guardian. We shall allow you, but if only the guardian is re, uh, the one registered as the one who pays your fees. If you lose a sister or a brother or your own child, it is understood that you cannot bear that pain and sit for examination. We shall allow you to sit for that special examination and uh, earn the total marks that you will have scored. However, your dean and your department must take this matter to the registrar for approval. So don't just walk out and say, I lost my parent or guardian. No, it has to be communicated in writing and an approval sort. Another point, if you are sick during the exemption period and you truly are sick and you've been to the hospital and the doctor says you cannot sit examination, we shall allow you to sit a special examination with evidence and write-up report of a doctor. So all this information will be provided to you in, uh, in the next week or so in what we call student information hard book. So you can keep referring uh, what to do in certain circumstances. Now, the good students who will have progressed, who will have passed the exams with no issue, will, I shall allow them to progress. And progression here is that you've certified the school board of examiners and the senate for the courses for which you were registered and examined in. Then we shall allow you to move now to year two of study or to year three of study or to year four of study until graduation. So, while you progress, take care.
to not fail uh, more than 50% of your courses. If you fail one, two, three, uh, those ones become supplementary, they become attempts. But if you fail half the courses, you will be discontinued. And then you will now not uh, have attained your, your, your mandate as a student. A candidate who fails to sit for an exam will be deemed to have failed. Previously, we took it that, uh, oh, we understood you, fees was not paid, oh, I had uh, personal problems. Now, we are of age and we are saying, if you fail to sit for an examination for whose course you registered and studied, then we shall uh, assume or it will be deemed that you failed. So ensure that you sit for examinations as required. However, if for some reason you have been given a verdict of Senate of fail, discontinuation, or supplementary exam, and you feel that really you didn't fail or there's a valid reason to it, the process allows you to do an appeal. So you can write to the vice chancellor through the registrar, a, uh, academic and student affairs within 21 days and the, your case will be heard by a special committee called the appeals committee. They will uh, listen to your case and they will consider whether to have you back or change the status that you have been given. Very quickly, if for some reason you have a problem right now and you cannot study, don't just keep quiet and say that I have a problem, I didn't go to, to school, I didn't study. You are required uh, to go to your school and write. You can have what we call deferment. You can be allowed to defer this semester and come again next year or come again at, uh, at a time that uh, you are comfortable. Or you can be allowed uh, to yeah, defer the semester or defer the full academic year. But the maximum times you can defer is two times. That is a maximum of two years. Now, the registration. If you fail uh, to pay fees uh, and, uh, within the, th the, the third week and you're not in the university to study within the third week, you will be registered. So I am insisting that you are required to fit within the regulations to remain on progression. Then the last point I want to mention is the exam irregularities. Uh, in high school, we waited for four years to know whether you cheated in an exam or not. If they didn't catch you stealing, uh, cheating uh, in the KCSC, then uh, we just say, thank you, God, that malpractice must be left there. But in case you, 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 you come with those uh, tabias, to the university, then it's very unfortunate. The system is very, very, very unkind to people who would wish to acquire an academic certificate fraudulently or undeservingly. What will happen is that you will carry your writing, writing material into the exam room, or you, you will carry your phone into the exam room. Now you are very digital. Actually, I, I'm surprised you got into this uh, today's meeting on your own. So you're very good and very smart students. So you can imagine that smartness must be properly utilized. You will come in with your phone and a screen will be there. So you'll be telling us that the phone rang and I was looking at it. All those now are what we call malpractice. I have a full schedule uh, of exam malpractices which you're going to find in your student information hard book. Carrying a paper into class, writing into your palm, or all into your thighs, all into, or giraffing into your, giraffing is the one that I found most common. Giraffing into your neighbor's um, work, all those uh, account to exam malpractice. Or you can even be smarter and ask your sister or your brother to sit your exam. Those are things we are calling exam malpractice. So we shall, be pun we shall punish you without mercy for those ones. Avoid them. 
Now, for those of us who will not have uh, any issues with progression, who will have no issues with academic malpractices, will progress you into what we call the university award, which is, number one, a resort slip at the end of each semester and a transcript at the end of each academic year. So you'll get your, your, your first academic uh, award as in form of a resort slip, and at the end of the year, you'll get one as a, as, as a, a transcript to show what you've studied in that academic year. But the four academic transcripts, or five, depending on the course you are taking, will now end you to what you call graduation, and you're going to be classified as first class, or second class, upper division, or second class, lower division, or pass. Yes? Yeah. So I know you are all here at the moment, you are all here on first class category and second upper division. Please maintain your score. It is easier to pass. It is easier to maintain the score at the university because of the content that is, taught, is, is, is limited to three months only as opposed to a, 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 com a comprehensive curriculum of four years examined ones. With those very many remarks, I have mentioned to you issues regarding examinations. For me, we shall meet again after four years. So I tell you, welcome into Mary University. I tell you, enjoy your studies. I will see you in 2025. So for us, the exam office is out of bounds. Don't look for us. Our face is the office of the registrar. The office of the university examinations is completely out of bounds for the students. Don't be bright. Don't come there. You, some of you are my friends. Please don't visit me, but you shall meet in the corridors of the office. Thank you very much. With those many remarks, I shall now call upon uh, Mr. Ramara. Mr. Ramara, you met him, the, 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 the person who was talking on that mic the day you have been admitted. He's a sports manager of Mary University. He's going to tell you how to ease this pain that I brought with the examination. So Mr. Ramara, you're most welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Madam. Let me say that uh, my name is Ramara Timothy, the in charge of sports in Meru University. I've met some of you already, uh, but there are some that I haven't met. I'll go straight to what entails sports in this university. And before then, let me join my colleagues in congratulating you for having made it to Mary University. Feel welcome. We are going to be with you for the next four years, and I know it will be an exciting moment in those four good years. I'm going to start with our philosophy. We have our philosophy as sports, and it is the three Ds. This is uh, discipline, dedication, and determination. Starting with discipline. When you have discipline, all the other things fall in place. The other thing that I'm going to talk about is what we have in this university in matters of sports. We have uh, various sports disciplines in this university, and uh, I'm going to categorize them. First, I'm going to start with the uh, ball games. In your high school and also in primary, you had a lot of ball games. We have them here and many more. For example, we have football, we have basketball, we have netball, we have volleyball. Those are the kind that I'm calling uh, ball games. And we have many more uh, ball games that you have never uh, uh, encountered, like floorball and robo. Robo is a game that uh, is played in skates using a basketball, but scoring in uh, uh, handball goalposts. Floorball 
Here is a game that is similar to hockey, but is, it is played in a smaller court or in a smaller field of play. We also have what we call bat games. That is a game that, uh, games that are played using bats and balls. And here we have two. We have softball and we have baseball. And let me state that we are the only university in East and Central Africa with a baseball diamond that we constructed in the year 2014 to host qualifier, world qualifiers for Africa. That was way back in 2014. Uh, we have also um, Udbo. This is a game that uh, is new to you. It is played at uh, the graduation gardens. It is a new game uh, in this country. And Mary University introduced it last year in, uh, in, uh, in November last year, 2020. We have athletics. In athletics, we have field events and track events. And also we have cross country. Let me state also that in cross country women, we are the reigning national champions. A trophy that we got early this year in January at the Kaparak University. We have indoor games. These are like badminton, played at the MPH, chess and the scrabble. We have, uh, we have um, table tennis, karate and taekwondo. These are martial arts. These are, you are going to find them at the engineering complex. Let me also state that we are national champions in women badminton, a trophy that we received just the other day, last month, during the KUSA national playoffs held at uh, JQUAT. When I talk of KUSA, it is Kenya University's Sports Association. We have swimming. Uh, our swimming pool is almost complete. We are going to start using it uh, in, uh, in January next year. Uh, it is a state of the art. In fact, what we, uh, we call Olympic size uh, swimming pool. We also have pool, a game of pool, which is next to the MPH. Go there and you are going to play that game. Having talked about uh, the many games that we have among so many others, let me say that uh, uh, when it comes to training and also competitions, we have what we have uh, we call intram in intramurals, that is games within the university, whereby we engage in, uh, uh, first of all, we engage in training, both for competitions and for leisure and recreation. We have uh, inter-school inter -school competitions. We have uh, uh, inter-year competitions. And after that, after we, 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 we form the university teams, we go out for inter-university games. We have six, six conferences in this nation, and we are in what is called Kusa Central Conference, which has 11 universities. This week, over the weekend, we are having Women's Sports Day here at Mary University, and we are expecting around eight universities to take part in the women's sports. We are encouraging you, even if you might not take part as a player, you come and cheer our students, our players, uh, and also you uh, uh, get to, you know, mingle with your former classmates or schoolmates who are in other universities. Let me state that we are, uh, our state of art sports complex is ongoing, the construction. It is good you visit that place. Uh, but as, even as we have the construction ongoing, uh, the, our games are continuing in other areas that we have. We have uh, improvised uh, 
pitches. Another thing that uh, I would like to announce to you, students, is that we have captains for each and every year and each and every gender. For example, we are expecting you first years, when you join each and every sport, you uh, appoint your captain. For example, if it is uh, volleyball, volleyball men have your captain, volleyball women have your captain. We have the same for second years, we have the same for other years. And all these captains, we bring them into one of WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp group for his communication. So that whatever we tell you as the office, you are able to tell your colleagues in your other WhatsApp groups. Um, apart from Kusa Central or uh, uh, conference games, we have Kusa National Playoffs and the Kusa National Games. Kusa National Playoffs, we selected two best teams per conference, and we, are, we have six conferences, so that each, uh, each discipline has 12 uh, universities at the national level. Like I've just talked about the uh, Kusa National Playoffs at JQuat last month. Uh, we have East Africa Games. <clears throat> the last that we, we participated in before Corona was in University of Dodoma in Uganda in 2018. We had some students there, and we are expecting to take more next year at Makerere University in Uganda for East Africa Games. This year we have FASU Games. FASU means Africa Games. Africa Games. We have, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> we have... Uh, FASU games in uh, FASU rugby games in uh, Kampala next month. In November, we shall be having FASU cross country and uh, FASU three on three basketball at uh, JQUAT and USIU, respectively. Mm -hmm. My time is over. Uh, let me say that uh, 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 apart from uh, having sportsmen, let me congratulate the tennis students, PE students, the, the tennis PE students who have uh, joined this university. These are future uh, university managers in sports and the managers in sports throughout the country. May God bless you as you pursue this course. You are the third university that is Mary University after KU and the Nairobi University. God bless you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ramara. Each one of us is to ensure or making sure that the students are comfortable and they enjoy their life in the university. As I said, all alone, we are free in Mary University but as the academicians say, man is born free, but always in chains. So you are free, but your freedom is limited by the laws of Kenya and limited by the laws of the university. I now call upon Mr. Gerard Maungu, a Chief Security Officer, who will tell us the do's and don'ts of the university so that we are not breaking the law and we are not going to court we are not to defend ourselves and we are enjoying our life within the confines of Mary University. Welcome, Mr. Maungu. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as it has been said earlier, uh, my name is Jared Maunga, the Chief Security Officer in the University. Let me also join my colleagues who have uh, spoken earlier for congratulating you for having uh, chosen and uh, subsequently been admitted to this university where you want to shape up your career. I will start by introducing the department, that uh, the Department of Security uh, is here to ensure that uh, you are always comfortable in the university from migration, either internally or from without, and that there is peaceful existence some of our roles as uh, the department 
is maintained and so for all under order, as you have been told earlier, that uh, these roles have uh, already been uh, formulated, and our work is actually to to uh, to actually to, to 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 implement and enforce and enforce those roles already in place. Also, we control traffic in the university. Uh, we also protect the life and property in the university. Also, we apprehend offenders. Uh, Apprehension means to arrest. Uh, if the designer offender who then uh, violates uh, the, 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 the law to an extent that is extreme, we do arrest them and either deal with them internally here or we refer them to the other security agencies externally. We are also the liaison office uh, between the university uh, and the external security agencies on security matters. The department comprises of uh, uh, three bodies. Uh, Number one, some armed police officers in the university actually who are wi housed within, some internal security personnel, and also the contracted security services, such as the kind that you saw at the gate with the police. So all of us, our aim is one, that to make sure that you are comfortable and safe while in the university and even outside. So, some of the items I will mention that will then uh, uh, guide your stay within the university is on access control. That uh, when you were coming for registration, you realized uh, we have got access gate to the university, the main gate through which you came, where most of our visitors come through, students and staff. And then and that as you come to the university, you are uh, expected to identify yourselves. So then we can be able to differentiate you with uh, other people because we cannot be allowing every other person to be coming to the unit because this one can ultimately compromise on your security. So you therefore need your student identification cards. And I know it might at times take some time before they are finally processed, but we don't deny you uh, entry entirely because then you can, you can use your admission letter. You can use your admission letter to show to the security uh, personnel at the gate, along with your national identification card, then you can be allowed entry. But then management, I know it's committed, uh, it's expediting on the process of uh, ID production, so that at the end of the day, each one of you will have student ID, which then you'll be using to identify yourself through any of the access points. Other than the main gate, we also have other gates, uh, Siwa gate, Mokalia Gate and Farm Gate, through which students also will be accessing the university depending on your point of residence within the main campus. So students can use any of those uh, gates as long as you identify yourself using either, in your case, uh, our first years. For a start, you can be using your admission letter before you are finally issued with the student identification card. But in the case of uh, motorists, motorists uh, uh, who either have motorcycles or or uh, motor vehicles, you don't use any, any of the gates except the main gate. Motorists come in through the main gate only, so they are, the rest of the gates are restricted. They are limited only to, pedest I mean, those people who will be coming to the university on foot. Something else is uh, on traffic control, that as you come to the university, we have noted that some students violate uh, the general uh, traffic rule and they do not use the, the pedestrian walkways. You walk right in the midst of the road, which is made for the motorists. So kindly, can you be walking uh, uh, through the pedestrian footpaths, which are, have been provided for your own safety? About your stay in the hostels, there will be general rules and regulations that uh, will govern your occupancy, which you are going to read and uh, pick on first to it. But among others, uh, students, I want to mention the issue of uh, cooking in the hostels. Cooking and the use of coils in the hostels, it's prohibited. Never should you cook in your, your hostels, because we have seen instances where this one may, may cause fire. So if you are caught doing so, then the consequences are very dire. Also, within the hostels, there is uh, the people you are into the hostels, there is limitation of time. You don't allow strangers completely. And in case of uh, fellow students, there is 10 to 10 rule. That uh, especially students of opposite gender, 
don't come to your room after 10 at night and actually before 10 a.m. in the morning. So then uh, uh, be, be, uh, be conversing with those uh, timelines and uh, should uh, a feast of opposite gender be found in your room within uh, those time frames, then uh, consequences are also very, very dire. And at no time, actually, you're supposed to bring any stranger to your rooms. Also, you're, you are going to realize that you are going to be sharing keys to your rooms. And it is very important that you don't share your keys with uh, anybody unauthorized. Because these are the people who will turn out to be thieves later. When you go to class, they will come open up and then steal from your rooms. Something else uh, uh, is, is about, uh, I've said about the, I mean, the issue of not sharing the keys. In case of any breakage in the room or a loss of any key to your room, you are encouraged to report. Report to the horse officer so that uh, arrangements can be done either to do overhaul of the locking system so as your, your property is secure within the rooms. Between the moment you don't report, then whoever finds the key can easily come and open up your room and ends up stealing from you. Still within the hostels, uh, uh, students, uh, most of you have laptops right now. And then for safety of your laptops, you know a laptop is as, uh, uh, as good as money. The rate of conversion of a laptop to money, the minute to money is very fast. Eh? Just the way you cannot leave uh, a lot of money on your table in the hostels, don't also leave your, 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 your laptops there. There is a closet provided, a drawer kind of, where as a second level of security, you can be keeping them under lock within the university hostels. And even outside, those ones who didn't secure uh, accommodation within the university, make sure that the Saji property is uh, secured. Still within your hostels, personal uh, properties like ATM cards, like uh, SIM cards, do not share personal information like PIN and password. Some people can easily take the smart cards, go to the bank and withdraw money when they know your PIN. Make sure that information is uh, uh, very secure with you only. Never should it be shared. While working at night, students... Uh, you are encouraged to work in groups, especially in dark points, and also avoid uh, deserted uh, streets. You go somewhere, you find a deserted street, there's nobody there at night, then there is a good reason why that place is deserted. Also avoid it. Use a good place, a well-lit, however far, but is, that, that will be safe for you. Also, you are encouraged to use uh, well-lit streets, avoid the dark points, especially those uh, students uh, staying outside the university. Also, I forgot to say that uh, within the other campuses, Malimba and town campus, we have got our security desks there. So that if there is any uh, security incident within those points we are represented, you can easily report, report there for, for assistance. Still, while uh, within your rooms, uh, students, there are curtains. So don't press valuable things like a phone very close to the window and the curtain has not been pulled. Because then you give people the invitation, even those ones who have never stolen, to break into your rooms and steal. Make sure when you, lose, you, you leave your rooms, pull the curtains so that then your tables are not visible from, from outside. Students on loss of property, uh, if you lose any property while within the university, whether it is a phone, a laptop, an ID card, you are encouraged to report immediately, number one, as a first refer to the internal security desk, then uh, number two, to police. Whether or not you are going to find uh, uh, this, this item, it is important to do so, because your, your ID, for example, can be recovered somewhere two weeks later, and you never reported and a serious uh, crime has happened there. So you, will easily be, you can easily be linked to that crime if you never reported, because then it will be assumed that you are the very person who dropped that item there. It's important, therefore, to report and uh, have your OP numbers from police and the uh, police abstract, so that uh, in case uh, something like that happens, then you can be able to defend yourself. Number two, it is worthwhile reporting also because of investigation. Because when you report, then we can commence investigation because I told you 
one of our roles is also investigation into committed uh, crimes. Something uh, else, students, I would like to mention is about uh, our surrounding, uh, the, the environment here, the area surrounding the universe, not very far here, uh, is uh, are elephants. There is elephants in Krosa. And so the far flung areas, if you walk very far away from the university as to cross the boundary, out there, there is some forest where elephants are. So some people make a picnic, even right into the midst of that forest, and knowing that uh, there are elephants there, which can be very risky to your lives. Therefore, can you keep off uh, that place? The, this compound is uh, large enough. Don't go, I mean, uh, make a picnic to far flung areas, outside the university uh, compound. Something else, students, I would like to mention here is about the presence uh, out of pound in the university. It has already been mentioned by Dr. Ali here, our moderator, that the exams room, exams office is a place out of pound, among other places that will be stipulated, including the, some server rooms, uh, some main switch rooms, uh, those are places that uh, are out of pounds. And the swimming pool, the upcoming swimming pool, because we have had instances in other universities where students have drowned. Because if you must uh, move closer to that facility, then you must be guided. The sports officer will agree with me like that. That's another place out of pound. You don't go there uh, unguided, the swimming pool. Something else, students are going to, at a time like this one, when you are joining the first uh, week, the second week, you are very vulnerable. And some people could be taking advantage of you, especially those who are looking for hostels outside the university. Make sure if somebody approaches you and uh, gives an indication that uh, he has hostels to hire, that you also hire us with our office within the university, the host officer, who then knows who are these hostels who have been... Uh, uh, cleared and uh, uh, cleared for your use. We are all the due diligence has taken place and uh, those hostels are used for, I mean, uh, secure for your use. For you to be sure that the, the hostel you are just about to occupy is good enough for your stay. Something else, students, this is about uh, the new Bakumi initiative <laughs> across the country you have heard about this, that it is good that you know who your neighbor is. Know who your neighbor is, whether you are staying outside the university or within, uh, and so that it can be easier for you to identify strangers. Any unusual happenings within the surroundings should be reported. should be able to report this one uh, promptly, either to internal security office or even with the police. So for that purpose, let me provide the numbers, emergency contact numbers, which you can use to report in case of such. With internal security hotline number, where only security-related matters can be reported, the number is 0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2000-0111-2
uh, opportunity also to wish you well, a safe and fruitful interaction with you within the university. The university has uh, embraced the open door the policy. When you have any issue, walk to any of these officers, you can be sorted out from po top to bottom. We always listen to our students and do not uh, die with a problem. If you have a problem, there are these officers, uh, dean of students, our HS trier, the chief security officer, depending on which kind of problem, and you can always be sorted out. Thank you very much. May God bless your stay in Mary University. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Maungu. Let me join Mr. Maungu in telling you that uh, in case you get too much stress and you feel, feel like killing someone or hitting somebody, uh, join Mr. Amara in hitting the balls. Please don't fight because Mr. Maungu will take you to very, very bad uh, places. <laughs> now, um, still, as we are trying to orient you into Mary University, we want to remind you that the core business is studies. But at the same time, we want to have a holistic person, a whole human being with skills of all types, skills that will make you survive uh, in any environment. At this point, I'll invite Madam Anne Kimathi, Director IGU, uh, to tell us what IGU is and, the, and its uh, connection to us as students and how we can exploit the skills that we have to make our lives better and practice what to do with the outside world. Welcome, Madam Anne. Good afternoon. I want to take this opportunity uh, to welcome you all to Meru University and to congratulate you for making it to join this uh, university. My name is Anne Kimavi. I am the director of income generating units. And so from where I sit, I want to discuss with you a few things about <coughs> I want to discuss with you <coughs> sorry, a few things about income generation. Now, income generation is at two levels. There is the corporate level for the university, and we also think about our students at the individual level. How can the student eh, plan so that he, can gen he or she can generate some income uh, during their stay at the university before the four years are over? Because when you join this university, you, you're going to take some time to study whatever degree you're taking. It can take four years. But within these four years, we want you to be able to generate some income for yourself. So to this end, then, our department was tasked with coming up with pro programs that these young ones can undertake, short programs between three and six months that can enhance their employability. So that when you take your first long holiday, you're not just going to hang out there at home. You're going to find something that you can do. And so that at the end of these four years, uh, you will be known in the market and you will be able to penetrate the market. And before that, you can join some income. So we have come up with at least as many as 15 courses that we can offer to these young ones. And because this is a university of science and technology, most of them are science and technology oriented. I want to name these courses so that you can uh, put them down and consider which one you can uh, start with. Now from the School of Engineering and uh, Architecture, we have a short course by name, uh, Mechanical Drawing, Design and Interpretation. These are three months course that we will soon be rolling out. Um, we also have gas installation, that's another short course, three months. We have pipe joining and processes, solar water installation. Uh, you know that solar is becoming quite popular, so you can imagine taking your, uh, your leave and then you have two, three solar plants to install. That will make you, uh, will give you quite some money. Um, project management and costing, this is another popular course that is coming up. Uh, because, you know, 
Hata wanachama in the villages, they also need some project planning and costing their small or big projects. We also have another one, HVAC, that is heating, ventilation, and hair conditioning. Uh, we have another one, boho installation. Uh, you know that uh, most of the counties are now embarking on uh, making boreholes so that there can be water because Kenya is an agricultural state. So this is another one that is quite popular. We also offer boiler installation, firefighting system installation, pump installation, water treatment system, uh, swimming pool installation, and plumbing generally. So all these courses, uh, we will be uploading the details in our website, but it is important that you learn that these courses are there, and uh, these courses are examined by National Industrial Training Authority, NITA. So the certificate we give you is not a local certificate, it's a certificate that is recognized nationally. Uh, the others, uh, you will also get, for some of them, you will be able to get the National Construction Authority Certificate, that is NCA, um, and this will really improve your chances of earning some income for yourself. Another course that uh, we are rolling out is ICDL, that is International Computer Driving License, as you know that uh, now this economy is computer, uh, it's all about computer. And you also know that even deep in our villages, many people have come up with small computer colleges. When you walk across the road, you find JJ Training College, PP Training College, that kind of thing. So employers do not really uh, consider certificates from these small colleges very seriously. These days, when you hear someone asking for computer literacy, they are asking for eyes in the air certificate. So that is why the university found it important that we roll out this program so that all our students across all our schools can plan to take this, uh, this program. Now, the other one is driving school, and this really enhances your future vision. As a young man, as a young lady, you see yourself, you know, driving, and it really makes your future look bright. So we want to encourage all of our students driving in school for the young ones, and it also makes you to work harder. So we want to encourage the young ones, all of them, save some money uh, so that you can use it for these courses. As you plan, do not plan to eat all of it. Don't plan to drink some alcohol and that kind of thing. I want to encourage you to begin saving right away because uh, these courses will really make a difference in your life. So with that, um, the other thing I would like to mention is that uh, INGU at the university level, we also have a farm, a lunch lunch farm. So uh, you can get your greens from our farm if you want sukuma wiki, if you want fruits, if you want onion, cabbage, sweet potatoes, all this in a, uh, in our farm. Check out what is in our farm before going to buy out from out there. So with that, I come to the end of this presentation. And what I'm saying is that all this information will be uploaded to your website. I know some are asking, where can I begin to pay? Because yesterday I got a number of students who wanted to start driving. We will soon give you a number where you can deposit the money. We will also show you uh, where you report and when to start. If you have any question, you can always get in touch with us. We will give you our contacts at the, the website. But if you visit our INGU office at the Innovation Center, we will, be, uh, we will give you more and more details. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Anne, uh, for those insights on how to uh, better our skills. Now, uh, we want to conclude our day by inviting our registrar, academic, student, academic and student affairs, uh, Dr. Karanja, 
uh, to speak to us. He's the one that we all assist in making your life very comfortable here. And he's the one who is the face of the university. He owns you all students. So he takes care of you in all matters. So we want to hear from him and uh, then we shall uh, tell you what to do next. Welcome, Dr. Karanja. Okay, uh, good afternoon. I believe it's almost evening to all our students. And uh, let me take this chance to first welcome you to Mary University, Mary University of Science and Technology. And uh, I would like to inform you that uh, this is not just a university, it's a world-class university, a world-class university of excellence, and our niche is mainly in the field of science and technology. As you may have noted, we have a total of eight schools. One of the school is the School of Business and Economics. A good number of you have been admitted into that school. We have another school that we call the School of Agriculture the School of Agriculture and Food Science, where we have a number of programs learning in that school. Then we have another school, a big school, School of Computing and Informatics, where we have programs like Computer Science, Computer Technology, and I know a good number of you belong to that school. We have also the School of Engineering and Architecture. We have the School of Education. We have the School of Nursing. And we have the School of Pure and Applied Sciences. I'm mentioning that because your identity in the university will be your school. Each school has a code. If you find your registration number starting with BS, it can be BS203, BS201, BS101, then you belong to the School of Business, the School of Business and Economics. If your registration number starts with AG, AG101, AG206, then you belong to the School of Agriculture and Food Science. If your registration number starts with CT, CT, then you belong to the School of Computing and Informatics. But for those whose registration number starts with EG, those are students of engineering. For ED, then you belong to education. Then HS, you belong to the School of Health Sciences. For those whose registration number starts with NS, that is the School of Nursing, and those who start with a registration number of SC, SC204, SC203, then you belong to the School of Pure and Applied Sciences. So my dear student, please take note of that because your registration number is so important because it tells us where you belong. Mary University is a, uh, is a university that was chartered in the year 2013, but it actually started in the year 2009 as a constituent college of Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. But we became fully chartered in the year 2013, 2013 March. Later on, you'll be given the history of the university, but I can inform you from the beginning 
that this university has its roots from the famous Makerere University. And therefore, as you come here as a student, remember you have come to a university that is fully accredited to offer diploma programs, degree program, and any postgraduate study for those who are joining us for master's and PhD. In fact, we comply with all the regulator, regulator, regulators. For example, our programs are fully accredited by the Commission of University Education. Those are for the degree programs. For diploma, we are fully accredited by the TVETA. The TVETA is the body that accredits diploma program. On top of that, Mary University is ISO 9001 2015 accredited. In fact, if you look at all our documents, you shall see that sign, that mark of quality. ISO is an international body that ensures that all the processes we carry out as an organization meet the expected, the expected standards. Number two, we are the only public university that has been accredited by the Kenya National Qualification Authority. That is another mark of quality. So as a student who have joined Meru University, I want to assure you that the programs you have been admitted into are programs that are recognized. We are also a foundation of innovation. As a student of this university, you'll be expected you participate in development of knowledge. Maybe as we carry out our activities, our academic activities, you may discover something, something that is unique. We give you an opportunity to develop that idea. We have a whole building called the Innovation Center where students of this university usually come to develop those ideas. And those ideas finally become products or services that are commercialized. I also want to give you the structure of the university. This university is governed by what we call a council. Below that council, we have the CEO. The CEO of the university is the vice chancellor. Our current vice chancellor is Professor Lomana Sothiambo. You will be meeting him on Friday. The vice chancellor is assisted by two deputy vice chancellors. We have the deputy vice chancellor in charge of administration, finance, and planning, Professor Charity Gechoke. Again, you'll be meeting her on Friday. She heads what we call the administration wing of the university. Then we have Professor Simon Thuranera, who is the head of the academic division. Actually, he's the head of all issues regarding academic and student affairs. I assist him as the registrar in that particular division. He will be addressing you on Friday. Below the office of the DVC, we have the deans, the deans of the schools. I have already told you the schools you belong to. Each school is headed by a dean. This is equivalent maybe to a principal 
in high school. And this is the person you'll be working with on a day-to-day basis. In fact, this is the person who will finally graduate you. You'll be the person reading out the names of the graduates from the various schools. And therefore, as a student, this is a person you should know. You should know by name, and in fact, you should know his office. Below the dean, we have a very important person called the chairman of the department. The chairman of the department is like your mother and father. This is the person who will be telling you the unit you'll be doing every semester. This is the person who will be processing your examination. In fact, he's the person who will be even telling us the students who have passed and those who have not passed. You should know your chairman. You should know your chairman by name. You should, in fact, know the office. Below the chairman of the department, then we have the faculty members, popularly referred as the lecturers, the people who will deliver the content, the people you'll be meeting in the lecture rooms. Ensure every semester you know the lecturer who is teaching you in the various units. Then below there, we have the students. The students are led by what we call the student union, the SAMU, as it is referred to. You'll be meeting the readers of SAMU on Friday, and they'll be telling you how you will be joining that particular union. That is the structure of the university. But on top of that structure, there is the person who represents the president in the university. He is called the chancellor. Currently, our chancellor is Dr. Mwangi. Dr. Mwangi is known because he is also the CEO of Equity Bank. He is our chancellor. You rarely meet him. Maybe you'll have only one chance to meet the chancellor during your graduation as he confers the degrees and the diplomas. That is the structure of the university. Now, let me come back to very important information that I would wish to convey to you. Number one, that the whole of this week we are doing orientation. In fact, we are in our third day. Tomorrow, Thursday, as you have been informed, you shall be oriented on how to use a very important facility, the library. You will be meeting our librarian. A schedule will be uploaded on the website. Please make sure later in the day you visit the website so that you can be able to see who will be meeting the librarian physically in the library. That activity will be carried out the whole day. The same day, you'll be oriented on how to use our learning management system. The director has just addressed you, and she will be with you tomorrow. So tomorrow we shall have some students being taken through the library while others are being taken through the learning management system. The university is going to deliver content in two ways. You'll be taught physically or what we call face-to-face. -face. But at the same time, you'll also be taught online. When I talk about online, is like the activity we are carrying out right now. But this time, it will be carried through a platform called the Learning Management System. You will be shown how to log into that particular platform, how to register for the units, how you are going to attend the class, 
So please make sure that you avail yourself for that very, very important orientation. Then on Friday, ladies and gentlemen, will be the climax. It will be the climax of our orientation, whereby now we commission you to start your diploma, to start your certificate, and your degree programs. And that will take place through a ceremony. The ceremony is referred to as the matriculation ceremony. The matriculation ceremony will be conducted online. Actually, we shall use the same facilities we are using today. It is going to start at 9 a.m. It is scheduled to end at 12 p.m. It is so important for every student to ensure that you attend that particular ceremony. Because it is the ceremony whereby you are even going to take a pledge. It is the ceremony that you are going to get to see your vice chancellor addressing you. You'll be addressed by the two DVCs. And you are also going to be addressed by a very important person, the Dean of Students. Very important to you. You are also going to be addressed by your readers, the student readers. And finally, the VC will commission you to start your studies at Mary University of Science and Technology. Please ensure that you log in. You'll be given the details on how you are going to log in. And therefore, I expect you to be, all of you to be there. Then after that, we shall start now the semester. Your first semester. And this semester is starting on Monday, the 27th of September, where we are going to start lectures. So the lectures are going to start on Monday. And we start counting what you are told by AR examination, the hours of your training. Ensure you do not miss your classes. It is during the first lecture that we are given the details of how the course is going to be conducted. You are going to be informed about the course outline. The lecturer will give the layout of what you are going to do within the 13 weeks that you are told. And this particular lecture will be carried out either physically or virtually. So maybe the question comes, how do I know when I have classes? The answer is, there is a teaching timetable. This teaching timetable will be uploaded on the university website. So I expect you on Friday to ensure you visit the website and search for the timetable. And when you get this timetable, simply download it. You can download it and you place it maybe on your desktop. You can even actually use it as the wallpaper of your phone. It is very important. But because the timetable is such a big document, you may just want the part where your program is. Our timetable is very easy to use because let me take, for example, the students who are taking BCom. BCom, year one, semester one. You'll actually see a timetable for those students. So you don't need the whole timetable. You just take that timetable for Bachelor of Commerce, year one, semester one. And on that timetable, it is clearly indicated on Monday between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. you are going to uh, have a lecture, maybe a lecture on accounting. And the lecture will be conducted in ECB 05. <coughs> ECB is one of our lecture uh, blocks 
you better get conversant over the weekend so that when you see ECB, ECA, ECC, Rector Theatre, TB, you know which buildings are those. So the lecturer will walk into that particular room at 7 a.m. You are expected to be seated, waiting for the lecture. However, you'll actually see some other units which have been taught or indicated on the right timetable, virtual. Virtual meaning that now you have to go to the learning management system and you'll actually see a rink that is provided. You will click on that rink and you'll join the class. So my dear student, there are two ways of joining a class. The physical class, you walk into the room as indicated on the timetable. But for the online class, just sit whenever you are, but we prefer you to be in the university so that you can use the university Wi-Fi. For those who have a place, maybe in the hostels, you can sit there. For those who don't have an opportunity of having a room in the university, just sit somewhere outside and you'll be able to access the Wi-Fi. Make sure you attend the class. As I have said, the link for the class will be provided in the learning management uh, platform. The Oldale director will be training you on how to log in into the learning management system so that you can be able to attend online classes. Once again, I emphasize classes start on Monday. After four weeks, you are going to do the first cut. Yes, cut one will come on the fourth week. Cut two will be on the eighth week. However, in between, you shall be given, number one, assignments. You shall also be given some research work. You shall also be given some projects to carry out. Make sure you carry them out as directed. Because once we are through with the semester, that is 13 weeks, all you have done as cuts, as assignment, as project, constitute what we call continuous, continuous assessment. Which constitutes, if you are a bachelor's student pursuing a bachelor's degree, 30%. For master's degree, 40%. So make sure you attend to your continuous assessment test. ARA exam talked about examination. Your exams will come during the 14th and the 15th week. When I check my calendar, that will be early January in the year 2022. Then after that, that is after the 15th week, we are going to give you a very short break. In fact, a weekend to be specific. And the following Monday, we shall start semester two of year, year one. So, after you are through with semester one, early January, the same January, maybe the second week of January, we are going to start what is popularly called 1.2. 1.2 means year one, semester two, which will run all the way to May, May of the year 2022. Then after that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to give you a break and you are going to resume your year two in September of the year 2022. Remember, for those who are learning a four-year program, we are dedicated to ensure that you do graduate after your four years. For those who are doing the diploma two, year, two years, within those two years, you should have your diploma. And for the certificate one year, within one year, you should have got your certificate. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is important that you check the semester dates 
which have been uploaded on the university website. Still on orientation, I would like to mention that as we are carrying out the orientation, there is also another exercise that is learning parallel to the orientation program. That is medical examination. I hope that students in agriculture and food science, the student in health sciences, that yesterday you visited our health center for medical examination. If you have not done so, can you please make an effort of visiting our medical center? That exercise is compulsory. For the other students, I know today we had the students in education. Ensure that you have been examined by our medical officers. Otherwise, the admission process will not be complete. I also want to mention some few things that my colleagues have mentioned. Very important for every student. Number one, you are pursuing a degree program or a diploma program or a certificate program. It is very important to know that is the primary reason as to why you are here. And therefore, I do expect you to dedicate all your time in your studies. Truly, we expect that you don't skip even one class. Although we have put 80% as a threshold, it is in your interest you attend all the classes. However, if you don't attend 80% of your classes, then the registrar will not allow you to see it for the examination at the end of the semester. We shall not. We shall not allow you because we are not just training you. We want to ensure that we train you and ensure that you have got the right skills and competencies. The only way to do that is to ensure that you attend all your lectures. You have done all your assessment and you have also carried out all the projects. So my dear student, I do not expect to start the process of disciplining you because of failure to attend your classes. However, many university students also experience a lot of sports and games and clubs. During your free time, you have been told by the sports officer, the various sports that we have. I'm very sure, even when we were admitting you on Monday and Tuesday, you realized that the continuing students were busy playing their table tennis, their lawn tennis, basketball, they were all over. We truly want to embrace a culture where the students are also involved in games and sports. Ensure you register in one or two sports of your choice. Maybe you may have realized we are actually in the process of constructing one of the best sports field in this country. Ensure you enjoy those particular facilities. Number two, as a student, a university student, you are no longer a high school student, whose aim was to join a university. This time after you live here, after we graduate you, you are going to serve the society. The society expects you to be well packaged to meet the expectation. And my advice as your registrar in charge of academic is as follows. One, ensure you have the best results in your transcripts, ensure you get a first class. If you miss a first class, at least you get a second upper. Those are for the degree student. For diploma, ensure you score a distinction. And if you miss a distinction, you get a credit. But on top of that, my dear student, 
you also need some other professional courses. Director IGU has just pointed out some. I want to state here very clearly. Apart from the eight schools, Meru University has a center, a center for professional studies. As you are doing your BCom, you can be doing your CPA courses. You can be doing your driving. You can be learning how to do probing. You can be learning how to install the solar system in your village. My dear students, remember, you are now packaging yourself for, maybe let me put in quotes, an employment opportunity. So don't just have the mainstream degree, the mainstream <coughs> diploma. During your free time, learn some driving. Yes, by the time you live here, within two months, you have a driving license. Learn some probing. Remember, we are actually uh, having an MOU with one of the best, maybe not one of the best, the best trainers in terms of probing works. The Trident. You can Google, you can search. Get that particular skill so that you have another certificate. Maybe during your long holidays, you may want to practice some of those skills. Nowadays, students, you know, you can even apply for some contracts. Maybe there is some probing work required to be done somewhere. And you can actually apply because already you have those qualifications. Meru University is giving you such an opportunity. So I don't want you to be just that student who will walk out of the gate with a degree in mathematics and computer science, a degree in public health. I am looking for a student who will walk out of that gate holding a degree, holding a diploma, holding a certificate, holding some certificate in uh, uh, what we call professional courses, such that when you are now writing your CV, it is not just a CV saying, I went to a certain high school, I went to a certain, uh, let me start with the primary school, a certain secondary school, and a degree, and then a full stop. We want a very rich CV. That is the kind of student I would wish to graduate after two years for diploma, after four years for degree. Visit our website because we shall be putting all these programs on the website. Yes, it might cost you some few shillings, but that is actually what the world is looking for. This is the time to model yourself, to package yourself for the world. On top of that, the Dean of Students is not here. He will be talking to you. We have many, very many support systems. We have the student counselor. There are two of them ready to advise you, to guide you on matters away from the academic. We understand and we know you are social being and there are challenges outside the academic. Please, before you carry out some of the activities, some of the things that we hear young people doing, visit the office of Dean of Students. You will get assisted. As I have said, we have people very well trained to assist you. And because some of the things are going to be repeated uh, in many other forums, some have been said, I don't want to tire you. Mine is to wish you, to wish you well as you begin this journey. This journey that is finally going to lead you to what you have been dreaming. Your dream to become maybe an engineer. Make sure that you don't fall on the way. There are many challenges, and I hope you are going to overcome all of them. So at this particular time, I want to respond 
to some of the questions, some of the concerns that have been raised. Uh, if you have any question that you may want to ask, you can write it and it will going to be conveyed to me. Uh, some of the questions may be answered by my officers who have left. Like I have a question, how to log in to the portal? I don't know whether we have any ICT person here. Uh, but you are going to find what we call a uh, user manual. There will be a user manual on our website. It will guide you on how to log in to the student portal. How to change contact on the portal? Yes, this is some of the services we expect you uh, to uh, be provided with on the portal. You'll be able to change your contacts. Very important for us because we shall be communicating through the contacts you provide us with. So in case you have changed your contact, it is in your interest that you change this contact. How do you register for units? Very important. Again, through the student portal. The student portal is an answer to many of the questions. By the way, even your results will be posted on the student portal. So you register for units through the portal. Do the students have to register for the games? Yes, you have to visit our sports office. Our sports office is in uh, what we call um, Brock B. No, Brock A. But in case you get lost, you can actually uh, find your way through the office of the dean, the dean of student, because the sports office is under that office. Where do the students watch football? My, my. <laughs> my, my. The students watch football. <laughs> I'm very sure I don't know whether you are uh, in Manu. I'm a fan of Manu, so you may actually uh, want to join me. But we watch football in the MPH. That is the Malt Purpose Hall. That is a place you can watch football. Number two, you can watch football in the student hostels. In the student hostels, we have uh, uh, TVs through which you can watch these games. Is there a gym? Not for now. Not yet. But Mr. Amara, when you meet him, he can actually take you through some exercise. So, but for now, we don't have a gym. When to start unit registration? Unit registration is supposed to start immediately. In fact, my dear students, if you have not registered for units, can you do so today? Reasons. On Monday, on Monday. The lecturers will download class attendance sheets. And it is only the names of the students who have registered for the unit that will be on that class attendance sheet. And if you are not on that sheet, we shall assume that you have not attended the lecture. So I want to underline the unit registration should be immediate. The next question, is the payment of fees, is there payment of fees for the short courses? Yes, there is. Truly, there is some money. Because, my dear student, some of these short courses are examined by other bodies other than Mary University. I'm, all of, I'm sure you have heard about CASNEB. For those who have heard about it, you know this is an exam body. And it registers students, examines the student, but the training is done by universities. So all what we are going to do is to train you, to teach you about the courses that you have registered with CASNEB. And therefore, there is some retro money. The same case applies to driving school. The same applies to Trident and many other programs. By the way, 
it may be in your own interest to visit the office of IGU. It is located in what we call the Innovation Center. And she will take you through some of the courses, short courses that we offer. You may also need to know that there are some short courses that are not charged. Yes, there are some that are free. But those short courses are just maybe for a week or two. The next question, can one do the degree and the short courses concurrently? Yes, underline the word yes. In fact, we advise you to do them concurrently. Why? Majority of the time, the degree course takes you maybe six units, seven units. Seven, let me take seven units, multiply by three. That means you will only be attending lectures for 21 hours in a week. So you can just imagine the rest of the week you are free. It is those hours that sometimes the student misuse. And those hours are the ones we are telling you, you may want to use those hours to do other training that will assist you in future. Not in just future, in the near future. Because if you are trained by Trident to be a Praba, what will stop you from start practicing that particular skill once you close school? I've told you we are sending you for a long holiday between May and September. So, yes, you can carry them concurrently, but some you may want to carry them during the long holidays and others during the weekend. Can someone do more, more on first aid? Uh, we have not started a short course on first aid, but we have taken note. We may want to start it. Our IGU director has taken note that we may want to train students on first aid courses. I forgot the original document, my, my. Why did you forget? And my home is far. Can the student use the document, the copies sent electronically? Uh, my dear student, the answer is upright no. Original documents are used to verify the person we are admitting. Remember, this is a learning institution, and we admit you on the strength of your KCSE results. Some, we are admitting them on the strength of certificate courses they carried out elsewhere, and therefore we need to see so that we are satisfied beyond doubt that this is the right person. It is the person who actually hold this particular certificate. However, we allow you a period of three weeks. Within three weeks, you should surrender these documents so that you can be fully admitted. When are the classes starting? As I said, classes are starting on the 27th. The timetable, the teaching timetable, will be uploaded on the website on Friday. Friday the 24th. We are inviting you to check the website so that you get the timetable. How to change courses? Yes, we allow students to change courses. This exercise, we are, we are going to uh, put the requirement, the procedure on the university website. We are going to have a dean's meeting on Monday. And once we have agreed on the modality, then we are going to inform you on how you can change your course. So, my dear students, we wish to stop there. We wish to stop there for now. However, you can continue maybe putting your questions. We shall reply them. And maybe you may also want to visit the various offices for more information. For now, I just want to underline one thing that matriculation ceremony is on Friday starting at 9 a.m. 
ensure you avail yourself online. With that, may God bless you as you start your various courses at Mary University of Science and Technology, a university of excellence, a foundation of innovation. God bless you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Karanja, our registrar. Uh, with those very many remarks, we wish you a good stay at Mary University of Science and Technology. Kindly note the dates and the events that are ahead of us. That is a Thursday's event on library and the Odell uh, orientation and Friday uh, VCs Andres. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being patient and listening to us. We wish you well and a good evening at the university. Thank you. You can now uh, log out and feel free. Thank you.